For more than 25 years, Supercross has gone bar to bar across the USA. Growing out of the fabric of America and exploding into the mainstream of sport, it is unmatched by any other indoor racing series on the planet. It has become an international series without traveling abroad, as riders from all over the world now dream of competing in America against the best of the best. Supercross, the sport of high-flying action, precise timing and technique, bar banging, endurance, and in some cases, survival. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. We were just kids, man. We were just trying to impress the girls. You know, who could jump higher and who could go faster? It was just us kids, our dirt bikes, and rock and roll. 49-2, MC, 49-2. Carmichael, 49.1. Carmichael, 49.1. Leading a year. California before a sellout crowd. It's a battle of a newly crowned champion and the sports icon as EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick opens its 2002 season. We couldn't get a better rivalry to kick off a season than the old seven-time champion Jeremy McGrath versus the new kid on the block, Ricky Carmichael. Well, you know, Jeremy just turned 30 and Ricky turned 22, so it is a very, a very big difference there in age and experience, but uh, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of things that are similar. First of all, Jeremy set that incredible record of 13 in a row back in 96. Ricky tied that last year, but it's still going. If he wins here tonight, that moves to 14. Everybody's on their feet right now. Let's take a look at Carmichael as we're off and running with the season's opener from Anaheim. Michael Byrne, a great start. Philman, Brown, Chad Reed. Power 8 hole shot going to Michael Byrne. Oh, and the big crash back in the first corner. Ron Cotta, Lampson, and Evans all involved in that one as we break away with Michael Byrne, the Australian, on the Honda number 35. David Villeman right behind him, number 12. 20 laps, our main event. The battle is on out front. Here comes Villeman on the Yamaha. He's got all kinds of pressure now from Villeman. Villeman can feel it from Ricky. You see him already looking back in the air. If he can get around Byrne quickly, might give him just a little bit of a buffer before Ricky can get around. Number four on his new Honda, Ricky Carmichael in third. Here comes Billman in the woods. Carmichael on the inside route. Boy, a mistake here could be costly. 
Carmichael to the inside. Block pass, and they both pass. And Philbin goes into first. Ricky Carmichael into second, number four. And Ricky was all over the place at the end of that whoop section. It's a good thing it ended. Seems like when this guy makes a mistake, he makes up time. That time it was good enough for the pass on second. Now Villeman doesn't have that room that he was hoping for. Carmichael was able to get right by. LaRocco, Mike LaRocco, not with the greatest of starts. Now he made quick work of everybody, got right up to the back wheel of Carmichael here, and he has gained on the leaders. Villeman excellent at picking lines. You see Ricky dancing around through the whoops right there. It's getting slippery. You see LaRocco is always able to stay out of that groove, just a foot to the edge in that traction. Here comes LaRocco on the inside of Carmichael now, testing just a little bit. Oh, he showed him a wheel there in the corner. You know, it looks like to me, Art, he's a little bit faster than Ricky through the whoop section, but he, he can't follow him through there. He's got to try to pick a different line. See, he's tripling through that section twice. Ricky can feel it. That was, if he was on a different color bike, Ricky would have been over the bales right there. I don't think these guys ever have a vision problem in here, but that roost coming up sticks perfect. To, oh, oh, Ricky Carmichael goes down. LaRocco, it looked like LaRocco might have run over that right foot. He had nowhere to go. He was totally committed. Ricky nosedive right into the face of that jump. He is in trouble, Art. He's so, completely stunned. He's, his visor's gone. He hit his head. So the champion, who was on record-setting pace, is down, and it looks like it'll be a DNF for Ricky Carmichael. Our leader continues to be David Villeman, and that's got to give him a great deal of confidence once he gets an angle to see what actually happened behind him. Uh, he's going to see it when he comes around this next lap because they they can't seem to get Ricky out of the way. He's approaching that section right now. Now, where Ricky crashed is exactly where he crashed in practice this afternoon. Take another look and see if we can slow it down maybe a bit and see actually what happened here. As soon as he comes out of the tunnel, watch. He'll go for a little burst of power, and he spins maybe. Doesn't get the acceleration. Goes into a complete nosedive. LaRocco almost saved that, but he lost the handlebar and went down also. See Ricky nosedive in. Oh, that could be anything there. It, Morocco did run over his legs. But Ricky, he just drove his shoulder in. And it looked like the bike came down and hit him in the face. So the champion is down. And does that change the complexion of things here in the season's opener? David Villeman, meanwhile, leads the race. Ricky Carmichael experienced a violent crash. He is now on his feet and walking off the track. The DNF, though, will probably place him in 20th last place, David Bailey. Longevity might separate Jeremy McGrath's records from Ricky Carmichael's. Well, look at this. Down in the infield, the last corner, another one of our contenders out of the race. It's Travis Pastrana. Travis has a problem with the front disc on his bike. Unlike Carmichael, he is not injured. The Pastrana's night almost going as bad as Carmichael's. He's just having fun now. He's on cruise control. The Rocco got pretty close. You see him coming to the corner back there, but as usual, he needs two more laps. He battled it out with John Dowd once for the 125 championship. The checkered flag for David Villeman. His fifth career victory and the first time ever for David right now in America anyway that he wins the first round of a series. After the opening round in Anaheim, David Villeman was in first place with 25 points. Mike LaRocco was in second with 22. Ernesto Fonseca in third with 20. Australian Michael Byrne was in fourth with 18. And Ezra Lusk in fifth place with 16 points. Before an expected standing room only crowd, it's the second round of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speedstick. Our Suzuki starting grid, Carmichael Pastrana, Wyndham, Jeremy McGrath, Villeman, it's a great one for our second round. As Willow pulled off the win in the first round, but Ricky Carmichael, just how tough is Ricky Carmichael? I'm telling you, with a cracked bone in the top of his hand, he's taking on Travis Pastrana and the rest here in San Diego. We're off and running. Hard eight hole shot goes to Kevin Wyndham, number 14, but it's Travis Pastrana taking the lead in the moves. Oh, he takes a giant leap 
onto the platform. George Pastrana, Wyndham, Philemon, LaRocco, Ferry, and then Ricky Carmichael. Coming up and challenging. He's got to keep his cool right here. He believes in himself. He's got to just let Villeman do his thing and settle down. Let's get a report on Steve Lampson. Davey Coates? Well, I just talked to Dr. John Bonner. Looks like a broken leg for Lampson. A broken leg. Oh, Villeman just passes Travis Pastrana. And the bad news about Lampson. Thanks, Davey. David Villeman, who won the first round at Anaheim, has taken the lead away from Travis Pastrana. This was what happened while we were away. Ricky Carmichael made the pass on Wyndham, and Ezra Lusk hit the dust. But LaRocco also passed Wyndham for third and fourth. So it's Villeman, Pastrana, Carmichael, LaRocco, Chad Reed, and Kevin Wyndham in the top six. But right now, look at this. LaRocco is starting to close on Carmichael. This could be a great battle with eight laps to go. And getting three wins, but that wasn't enough to beat John Dowd out of that title. Oh, look at there, LaRocco passing Ricky Carmichael. LaRocco had such fast laps in the opening round at Anaheim, and it was a crash, unavailable, or unavoidable crash, because he was right behind Ricky Carmichael when Ricky went down. LaRocco fighting back for a second place, has now taken third here in round two. Here comes Travis right out of the corner. One more lap, pulling out all the stops. Two straight weeks, Jeremy McGrath has been lapped. David Villeman for the second straight week is in the lead, but Travis Pastrana just might pull out all the stops here on the final lap. Villeman has got to be flawless. He cannot afford one mistake. Damon Huffman right there, number 20, the only lap driver between him and the finish line. Oh, Pastrana pulling up as David Villeman likes to look back at his competition. In fact, he hates tracks that he can't see. The competition, David Villeman, his second consecutive victory of the season. His sixth career victory. And he becomes definitely the rider to beat momentum on his side with a second consecutive win. Slaps the palm of Travis Pastrana going by, Pastrana securing second, and Mike LaRocco, a third place finish with Carmichael in fourth. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Emig, 1997 Supercross champion. I'm gonna give you guys a little tour, a little behind the scenes look at what happens in Supercross. Follow me. up a little bit. How about you? I'm ready. I'm here with the champ, Ricky Carmichael. Year started off, not quite like he planned. Uh, not He's, one bit. Not one bit. <laughs> oh, no, and down goes Carmichael, and he wants to be injured. But it's getting better. Slowly but surely. I mean, the guys have definitely stepped up the pace. I mean, you look at the lap time charts, and there's six guys within within a second. I definitely need to uh, step it up if I want to be up on the on the top spot. Uh, but I think I got what it takes for sure. Still adjusting to the red bike at all? You guys? Uh, I pretty much am, am, am pretty comfortable, you know. But uh, Anaheim set me back a little bit, crashing and, and hurt myself, and it took some wind out of my sail. So just trying to rebound from that. What about the the orange gear? You. You got the orange gear back on. You got a couple of fours. That's right. Things are starting to get a little better. You I need to be wearing orange. Oh, I'm going orange all year. I mean, oh, yeah. that's, that's my deal. RC <laughs> replica. So. Uh, now, see, for myself, in '97, I came out with some shift gear that was orange, and that was bad luck for me. I did terrible in that stuff. So you like the, the, the yin You and like yang. the uh, black and white camo. Yeah, the camo. That's your deal. You get what? What is it? Why? Are, what do you think it is with guys like us? We get attached to this gear. The color is just kind of like with you eating baked potatoes before outdoors every, you know, every uh, Saturday night. You had to get a baked potato no matter what. We'd go to dinner, and if we went to a restaurant that didn't serve baked potatoes, after everybody went back to the hotel, I would call and find some place and go get one, like without anybody knowing. And you know, James Stewart, he's got to eat two chicken wings. <laughs> 
I don't know about all that. Yeah. Hey, I won a lot of races eating chicken wings, but I'm off that program now. Those are those are 125 races. Those are, yeah, you can't do that in a 250. I don't think. You can't you can't you can't get away with it when you're racing with the big boys, huh? Nah, I don't think so. But I'm gonna go sign some autographs now. Please the fans. Take care of the people who take right. care of me. Ricky Carmichael, he's the champ. All right. Exactly one year ago today, it was round three. We were here in Anaheim, California. Ricky Carmichael and Jeremy McGrath were tied in points. We're back in Anaheim. It's the third round. The two are still tied in points, but a big difference. They're tied for 11th place, not first this time around. Well, nobody could have guessed this, and it's a disaster in terms of the points. A little over 30 points behind they both are, but if you look at what you get for a race win, 25 points, I think these guys are counting on some of the other guys having a bad race. If that happens, they're back in the points chase. The 32nd board is about ready to go sideways. It is. We're about set for round number three, 250 action from Anaheim. Kevin Windham, the Powerade hole shot winner. And it's Windham taking over the lead. His teammate, Travis, right back there in third, in good position. Michael Byrne, another great start. He's in second place. Travis gets around him already, so here we go again. Suzuki teammates out front. Let's see if he can try that right side down the loops again. It looked good when he tried it. There he goes. Pastrana in the loops with Wyndham, his teammate. He's making it interesting. The crowd now starting to anticipate. Wyndham by the bar. Pastrana over the finish line jump. 14 laps to go. We're halfway through. A little bit more. David Willeman has taken the lead when Pastrana went down. And it's Villeman, LaRocco in second, Ramsey in third, Pastrana in fourth. And that's the way it stands. This is what happened to Travis. He comes up short. He's entering the three plateaus after the sand. He gets a little off timing there. He's lucky he didn't get hurt. He was able to bail out of that and save himself, but the bike is really bent. And here's our leader, David Villeman. Well, this Villeman is what I looking wanted to for see. three in a row. Look at LaRocco is not letting him off the hook. Will Mike LaRocco win his first in a long time? He's been closing on Villeman this entire race. Here comes LaRocco with the challenge. He's setting him up just like Pastrana set up Wyndham. The crowd anticipates. Villeman likes to know where he is. LaRocco. Philemon, LaRocco, who would guess that this season might be a battle between LaRocco and Philemon instead of McGrath and Carmichael. LaRocco, two races, two podiums. Can he get his first win since 1995? He's no, consistent as always. Yeah, but it was business as usual. And he had Villeman just having so much good fortune out front. No one was really taking the series by the horns. I thought maybe Travis was, a big mistake. Now, Morocco is letting everybody know he can win. He means business. And this championship, this might be his. It might be his turn. One lap to go. The white flag is out. Villeman has closed the gap just a little bit. The crowd is anticipating a battle. You saw the blue streak behind LaRocco. Oh, what a celebration this is going to be. Mike LaRocco. Incredible. And Travis Pastrana picks up third. LaRocco, the checkers. It's been a long time for Mike LaRocco since 1995. There's Villeman. And Pastrana got a third. Was this an incredible 250 main event in Anaheim? It had been a long time, and I was nervous, you know, but the track, I, like, I had pretty good. I mean, there wasn't really many mistakes I made the whole race. I didn't really focus on, you know, the negative. I felt like I had it pretty good, and I just wrote it out. All right, you guys, Travis Pastrana, huge crowd favorite. Let's hear it for Travis over here. 
I think everybody in Supercross is waiting for this guy to win a 250 main event. Anaheim, he was so close, just a shift away. Yeah, what one, one, one this shift away. I like how you put that. No, I, I'm always on the ground, but I'm working on it. I'm working hard. I feel like tonight could be the night. You, you really progress. I, I mean, just some amazing rides. You're riding the 250 like it's a 125. When I see you on the bike, you make it look small. You know, you're, you're really working it. Yeah, no, I feel good. I've been working really hard, especially on my starts, and I feel like that's a big thing. If I'd come out in front. Does Travis Pastrana out in front? I can run with those guys, and that's something I've never known I could do before. Pastrana, what's the challenge for Wyndham? When you won that heat race at Anaheim, you and Wyndham, you guys are doing one-handers, back back you're, you're going nuts. That's got to just be awesome, because you guys ride and train together. Incredible. Wyndham's putting on a fine show against Pastrana. And they're each other. Yeah, well, our Suzuki's are really fast this year. And it's great because we've come out one and two in the last, like, uh, three races out there. So it's just unbelievable that we're able to, to go out. When we get out in front like that, it, it's so much easier. You just kind of play around. And, you know, we practice together. With the bar. You win a race. Are we going to have some new trick off the finish line jump? I mean... After the race, not on the parade lap. Okay, Jeff. Yeah. First Super Bowl. I gotta win the race first. Win Once the race. I win the race, then you'll be able to see what I'm gonna but do. But you gotta have some trick in your mind that you're like, I'm saving it for that first 250 Supercross one. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Double backflip, triple running. Ooh. You heard it here. <laughs> All right, Travis Pastrana. See you, Jeff. Good nice. Night. Going into Phoenix round four, Carmichael was trailing Villeman by 30 points in the standings. Jeremy McGrath was also hungry, anxious to break out of the worst start on the season in his career. It was Jeremy bursting out of the gate neck and neck with Team Honda's Ernesto Fonseca, followed closely by David Villeman. McGrath gaining the whole shot, but the excitement was just beginning. Carmichael came from mid-pack to third in the opening lap. Jeremy was credited with leading the first five laps, but it turned into a back-and-forth battle for the lead with RC. Oh! Out of sorts! Fonseca! That gave the break for Carmichael to move into second! Carmichael showed everyone he was fully recovered from the broken hand and concussion suffered in the opener. If Jeremy leaves the door open, it's a block pass at the end of this section. Vicky will go to Jeremy's left. And Bill the might go right behind Carmichael. Carmichael! Clean pass! Pastrana moves into third, Villeman back to fourth. He never looked back, convincingly gaining his much anticipated first win of the season. The popular Travis Pastrana took his third straight podium in second, and Villeman placed in third. Yeah, good run. I got out to a really uh, pretty good start, had a few mishap. First lap, everyone's going everywhere. So, uh, yeah, felt good out there, stayed on the two wheels, and put my Suzuki on the podium for the third time in three weeks. Finally, it's uh, been a while. I got a good start, and uh, that's what it takes. I was just riding calm the first couple laps, and here we are. Uh, it's going to be a long season. I just hope I can do it again next week. After round four in Phoenix, David Villeman was in first place with 92 points. Mike LaRocco was in second with 85. Travis Pastrana in third with 66. Ricky Carmichael was in fourth with 62. And Ezra Lusk was in fifth with 57. Ricky Carmichael trying to get back in the points chase. Michael Byrne, his greatest qualifying effort. A more aggressive Jeremy McGrath. Ernesto Fonseca is really showing us he belongs in the 250s. The points leader, Villeman, LaRocco on the extreme inside as we look to the back of Carmichael. It's not quite sideways yet, the 32nd board. As you see Villeman right next to Carmichael. They like the inside. Number 199, Travis Pastrana, it's sideways. We're set to go from the main event from Anaheim, California. Jeremy McGrath with a great start. He gets the parade hole shot. He looks so much more aggressive in qualifying. Now can he pull away in his accustomed form of years past? Pastrana in third behind Ron Cotta. Now Pastrana and Ron Cotta in their semi turned 54 second lap times two seconds faster than anybody else so far tonight they might be all over mcgrath if they do it's going to be tougher on the break away from oh travis pastrana has gone down just behind mcgrath so carmichael moves into third a break for carmichael there he is front end washed out we've seen that so many times tonight 
A rough start on the season for Ron Cotta, battling minor injuries. Average worse than a 10th place finish. And he's in a battle right now with number four, Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael draws the uh, cheers of the fans. Carmichael looks back. Ron Cotta trying to get the jump, but a beautiful move inside by Carmichael. Now he knew what Ron Cotta was up to. He was going to try to block him, and he, he covered it perfect. It's too slippery for all that block pass and stuff. And I thought Ron Cotta was going to get in there and mess with Ricky a little bit, make him mess. Oh, he again. He did. He got in there. He's battling it, but uh, he stayed away from the contact. So here we go. Carmichael catching Jeremy just like a year ago. Such a difference in lines, too, by both Jeremy and Ricky. Jeremy can feel this right now. Watch what Ricky does at the end of the boot section. He's going to go wide. Ricky Carmichael! Roncada is not out of it in third yet. Now Jeremy's got to be a little bit concerned with leaving the door open with Ron Cotta back there because he's going to stick a wheel in everywhere he can. And Ron Cotta, who hasn't had better than a seventh place so far this year, is anxious to move up on that podium. Ron Cotta is going at it with Jeremy McGrath for second place. Put him on the go! You know what? McGrath is going to let this kid have it. That's just ridiculous. I understand that getting that shot on a wheel, but Ron Cotta is just, it's just annoying. Milliman is now hounding Jeremy McGrath. Milliman is so good through the woods. Into the triple. McGrath doesn't give ground, but Milliman accelerates better out of the corner. One lap to go. The white flag has been flying for our leaders. Now here we go. He's full of confidence now. I think the only guy that he really doesn't have completely beaten in the mind is Travis Pastrana, but Travis just can't stay up tonight. Well, everyone said, they go, he's gonna probably win this thing if he can stay up. He had a chance, he blew it. The defending champion takes the checkers for the second straight time. Villeman was really close to Ron Cotta in third. What a ride for him. David Villeman coming through, the points leader, and a great young champion, Ricky Carmichael. One of the huge surprises so far in the season was the inability of former seven-time Supercross champion Jeremy McGrath to make a podium. I've just been struggling. I struggled at Anaheim, I struggled at San Diego, I struggled at Anaheim again. You know, this is the first time in his career that he hasn't been on the podium at least once in the first three rounds. A lot of people have been hear hearing about all this arm pump business, really. You know, and I've never had arm pump in my life, but all of a sudden I do. You know, it's something I really didn't know. My back was super, super, like, curved between my shoulder blades. So my whole right side was getting pinched off. And I was unable to get good blood supply and so I was just pumping up like crazy and then my left arm was pumping up because I was overcompensating with my right you know Jeremy might be getting tight I hope that wouldn't happen I thought the semi would help but he's really not riding like he was in those opening laps so this week between the races I didn't ride I waited till Friday 150 percent better I mean I could at least ride the bike and, I, and the bike wasn't riding me you know a lot of weekend riders understand what arm pump is, but what I was getting was something. It felt like someone was stabbing me in my arms with a screwdriver. It was so painful. And I mean, you know, once you get arm pump, you whiskey throttle everywhere. You can't control the bike. And I mean, I was, I was, it was survival out there for me. Mike, you talked about it in his interview there, just kind of surviving this right now. Not able to really race for it. I don't know why. And it's, you know, it's never been like that. So that messes with your head, you know. First of all, it's been a long summer. Been training my ass off. And to be shut out right away like that is just not something I enjoy. And I was pissed. But I was also confused. So it's, it's not, it's really not that good mentally. So now it's, you know, starting to come around. I've steadily improved. And, you know, I've been doing everything I can do to get what I thought was to get my arms working again. But it wasn't my arms, it was my back. Just need to take it slowly. I don't feel like, you know, oh, it's all better. I need to go out there and, and win right away. I need to take it slow. I mean, the pace is really fast right now. It's not something I was concerned with right now is winning. I'm concerned with getting my body so it works right and everything back in line. And when that happens, then I can focus on racing and winning. 
After five weekends on the West Coast, riders, mechanics, and fans have moved east to Indianapolis, Indiana, as the battle for 250 supremacy heats up. Taking a look now at the starting grid for Suzuki, Ricky Carmichael, Jeremy McGrath, Stefan Roncata, David Villeman. Those are the big names so far this year, along with Mike LaRocco and Travis Pastrana. Pastrana, very popular in this building. You got Pastrana right next to McGrath right there. Carmichael right next to Villeman. Villeman, the fastest laps in practice. He was inching up on McGrath towards the end of that heat race. Keep your eyes on him. He's got the inside as well. 20 laps, 20 riders. Round six of EA Sports Supercross is underway. Good starts. McGrath, Carmichael, Villeman. Villeman, it looked like, might have gotten the Powerade Whole Shot Award. Number 12. David Villeman, the points leader, taking the lead. A look at number 199, Travis Pastrana, the Suzuki. They're rubbing plastic. They're going bar to bar. Travis looking back at him. Oh, this is going to be a great fight. Now he realizes Carmichael is right there. And Ricky shoved McGrath so wide he allowed Villeman and Travis by on the inside. Travis to the inside. On Villeman takes the lead. The crowd going crazy. Oh, Travis didn't get the best rhythm down that section. He's actually struggled with that all day long, but he managed to hold on to the lead right there. Villeman was all over that. He's got to be careful because Ricky has already shown him a wheel everywhere. Here's Carmichael. Carmichael moving into second. Look at this loop section. Villeman is so good in the loops. That's Ron Cotta, number 21. He almost collides with Villeman. Now Carmichael has caught Travis. The thing about Travis that I like, even if he gets hot, he's caught. I don't see him ever giving up. He's one of those guys able to respond to whatever the pace is and go even faster, which for most people would mean riding over your head. Oh, Ricky Carmichael to the inside. Number four, the defending champion, Ricky Carmichael, who won here last year, moves into the lead. Check out the whoops, Villeman and Pastrana. They blitz those whoops beautifully. Now Travis going to the inside line in that right-hand corner before they get back into the starting line. Whoa, Ricky getting really all out of shape. And Pastrana takes the lead again. Good save by Ricky. We've seen him go down like that before. He just hung on to that baby. That was the rut. He's been using the rut. Ricky, or Travis rather, has been crossing over that. The rut is actually more difficult. He's trying to stay in those loops and stay in the exact line. And once again, Travis blows the timing through the section, but he takes the line away from Ricky, so he couldn't capitalize on it. Billiman is coming right oh, in there. David Billiman going at it with Ricky Carmichael for second place. Villeman doing the right thing by getting in there and making Ricky a little nervous, but Ricky knew that the line he had would pay off at the end of the straightaway. Still, though, he's got to feel this pressure. And perhaps they're going to start having to ride a little bit more defensive again. And for the second time, Travis out front may have that opportunity to get away from these guys. Travis coming up a little bit short right there, so he can't do the rhythm. And Ricky once again closes in on him. Oh, Ricky to the inside! Travis opened the door just slightly, and Travis goes down. I don't believe that. It, this crowd is crushed. They love this kid. He had a chance. He had Travis looks right at the camera guy like, can you believe it? He's had so many of these opportunities, and he blows another one to win the race. Starting to see some nervous fidgets from Carmichael. When he gets a little nervous in the race, he starts adjusting the helmet. Chad, stay loose, Chad Watts. Yeah, how do you stay loose when you got the points leader? Right there on your tail. He's got a couple of spots out there, one after the before they go into the tunnel and one right after the whoops. White flag, final lap. Villeman to the inside. Oh, Villeman takes the lead. What a great move. No contact at all. He could have put him up in the hay bale. Look at the lead. He already opened up. Goes to the inside right there. Smart. Didn't you give this guy a lucky penny or something this morning? Yeah, I found one uh, last night in an elevator, and as I got, it was heads up. And you're supposed to give it to the first person you know you see. It's working. And I gave it to Villeman. I wonder if he kept it. The checkers for David Villeman. His seventh career victory. He becomes the first three-time winner this year. And I'm telling you, the percentages are with him as they weigh heavily toward winning the title. For third place, Stefan Roncata. Villeman needed this win. He needed those points. Ricky just took away 10, he got three of them back. Yeah, it was great. Great race, so just uh, was it like the dream race, you know? Like uh, waiting and trying to lay on uh, Ricky's line and stuff and pass on the last lap. It was great. That's good for the confidence, but you know, it's still a lot of races and uh, you need to keep, uh, keep focused. I messed up, he took advantage of it. 
I got it done the same thing, so I can't complain, you know. Just get, get a little tense on that, that section, you know, started, uh, couldn't get over it clean. I was devastated. So other than that, I felt like I was riding great, but another day. It's always another day. I was behind Travis there, and <clears throat> he tried to, well, he jumped past that rut, and I, I seen a chance to pass him, and I was already committed, and he tried to get back in the rut, and, you know, I was already in there, and he tried to make something happen that just really wasn't happening. He was completely outside of that rut, and I, I was in the rut, and uh, he just grabbed a handful and jumped right in, in my way. And, and I hit him and he crashed. I mean, I almost crashed too. But, uh, you know, the, the fans are hardcore and, oh well, that's the way it goes. Oh, hey. How you guys doing? We're uh, here track walk Saturday morning. All the riders come out and check out how deep the whoops are. All right, we're at the starting gate. Hands down, the most important part of the race. Car to go sideways, wait a couple seconds, put the bike in gear, get the RPMs up about midway. Start slipping the clutch, look for the pin to drop, look right down to your right, gate drops. You want to launch out of the gate. Jeremy McGrath with a great start. He gets the parade hole shot. Shift to third as the bike gets over the gate. What you do, you get the hole shot, you get all the TV time, you stay the cleanest. That's how it's done. Okay, you guys, we got cool Travis Pastrana, the professor, Gary Bailey. What's your, uh, what's your theory here through the whoops and what, uh, what are you helping your guys look for? when you're uh, walking the track? Well, if you're asking me two questions here, my theory is go around them. Yep, similar and, to mine. OK, so we're on the same track there. Uh, if we're talking about Travis, uh, obviously the idea is uh, keep the front end out of the bottoms and uh, keep the power on, keep that forward momentum going. Second or third gear on the Super Bowl? Uh, obviously, third I mean, gear with Travis. The service. Oh, four. Four. Uh, and, and no back lift yeah, through this. No back <laughs> through this section. You could probably get it. Maybe a front flip would probably be easier. I've, I've done plenty of those in the world. I think I've seen those. Yeah. <laughs> you that, too. All right. Well, that's such a good dismount when you're uh, trying to do it through the whoops. In the whoop sections, when you walk in the track, you look for which side of the whoops or wherever is the flattest across. If one is low or one is real high, uh, because if you're skimming across them, then you hit that high one, get you all out of rhythm, and you don't want to get down in the bottom, you want to stay right on top. Like second, third gear, maybe pin. Now basically, everybody's going to jump the triple. But the hard thing is finding something to say about that triple jump when you're on camera. In Supercross, most of the time, the triple is the biggest jump. They line it up right by the crowds, so the people in the front row get the full effect. The fans love it! Ricky Carbone! Normally, the 250, you hit the triple in second gear, 125 in third. Sometimes that varies depending on the steepness and the length of it. Basically, they're the same every week. All right, this is what everybody's shooting for, the EA Sports Supercross finish line. Hit this thing sitting down on a 250, snap it right off the lip, lead with the head and shoulders, whip the bike out, get it completely flat, pull it back, and wave to the crowd. That's how it's done. Round seven, Yamaha's David Villeman, by virtue of three wins and six consecutive podiums, still held an 18-point lead on Morocco, with Carmichael 28 back in third. The pressure was on RC to win every race. Sebastian Tortelli, in his first race after off-season shoulder surgery, surprised the Metrodome crowd, gaining the whole shot. Fonseca, Ezra Lusk, and Jeremy McGrath in good position to take advantage of a bad start by Carmichael. After leading for four laps, Tortelli lost it in the whoops. On the teammate Fonseca taking over for a lap, and then it was McGrath's turn to shine. Jeremy McGrath in the whoop section, battling the four-stroke Honda. What a move by Jeremy! He put a classic clock pass on Fonseca to take the lead. Jeremy, who had won the first six races ever staged in Minneapolis, held on for five laps before disappointment reigned. A spin out on lap 10 allowed Carmichael to take control. McGrath just blew it out front. And Ricky Carmichael is our new leader. This track proved disastrous for Mike LaRocco. Coming together with Travis Pastrana, the KG veteran, would sustain a broken wrist, ultimately ending his season. 
Guys, Michael Rocco just walked past me and Dr. John Bonner, he is holding his right wrist and it doesn't look good. Back in the corner at the end of the whoops, he tangled with Travis Pastrana. I honestly can't tell you whose fault it was, but Rocco's really complaining about his wrist and he went straight to the doctor. That's always a bad sign. Travis Pastrana, one lap after crash with Michael Rocco. You see the Rocco's mechanic, Paul DeLoria, came over to complain. Travis crashed all by himself came all the way over to the Parts Unlimited banner. Pastrana is also out of this main event. Two different crashes for Travis on two different laps, same whoop section. Here comes LaRocco. Here comes LaRocco, and he's still mad. One of the oldest guys and one of the youngest. For Ricky, it was his third win of the campaign. Honda's Ernesto Fonseca gaining added points for his teammate placing second in front of David Villeman. Villeman staging a great comeback ride, though, coming from 12th to 3rd for his 7th consecutive podium. Carmichael and I were kind of stuck behind LaRocco for about the first seven laps, and as soon as Carmichael got around, he moved up the ladder. He, in about a half lap, he moved up past the next three people, and LaRocco messed up the section, didn't do the double, and when he came up short, he crossed over. I was already committed to doing it. You know, I mean, hindsight, obviously 2020, I could have avoided that, but, you know, I was really focused on moving up, and I felt like I was the fastest rider on the track, and, you know, after seeing Ricky move through the pack, I knew I didn't have much time, so I was a little bit uh, overly aggressive, but I also think that, you know, LaRocco, he definitely messed up and cut over, so, you know, that that's racing, and I, I feel really bad for what happened, and, you know, obviously it really affected me when, He's like, you, you know, you broke my arm, and that, you know, coming the next two laps, I couldn't get it together and just crashed again and had to pull off. So um, I'm not affected much mentally by hardly anything. So that was, had to go home this week, but I feel good now. At that time, all I knew was uh, my arm was broken, and he did it, you know, and I didn't see what happened until, you know, a few weeks later. And uh, I mean, in my eyes, it was a poor judgment call, you know, on Travis's part, and I just happened to be in the wrong place. After round seven in Minneapolis, David Villeman was in first place, Ricky Carmichael was in second, Mike LaRocco was in third, Stefan Roncata was in fourth, Ezra Lusk was in fifth. Nearly 70,000 fans of the Georgia Dome, the largest crowd of the season, turned out to see if David Villeman was for real. At the end of heat number two, watch what happened. This was Villeman, just a retaliation from the block pass that Roncata put on him in the beginning. It wasn't that bad, but Roncata didn't like it. He rode up to say, hey, what was that for? And Villeman goes, hey, I'll tell you what that was for, man. I got 500 grand on the line, on the line tonight. I got the title in my hip pocket if I can stay away from you. It took me out after the, the first turn, and uh, it was kind of maybe the, the time too many, you know, like after Anaheim and uh, Anaheim 2, and it's, it's, it's kind of running really aggressive. But what happened happened, you know? Kind of come back and I did a mistake after the race when he hit my bike and I kind of kind of freaked but I wish I did not do that but you know that's uh, that's the way it is I guess. Hey he just freaked out for some reason I don't know what his deal is yeah it's he's just pissed at I think he's scared because he he sees that the championship is going away little by little and uh, he's just pissed when I pass him for some reason he can't stand that and he, he uh, it totally took me out, like a straight on Timon in that corner. And I, and I was really pissed for the rest. I, I came by and I bumped him in his rear tire. He, he uh, pushed the bar on the ground, just came over and started slapping me. Yeah, you, you don't lose the temper like that for no reason. Especially I should have been the one slapping him. When the gate dropped, RC simply took command, gaining the whole shot and pulling away to lead every lap. A great start by Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael got the power shot, whole shot award. And Pastrana's with him. Pastrana right there, and David Villeman in third. Villeman bar to bar, but Pastrana for second. One of the huge surprises so far in the season was the inability of former seven-time Supercross champion Jeremy McGrath to make a podium. In Atlanta, he turned his season around, while in third place on lap eight, his rival for the final step on the podium, Travis Pastrana, pulled off the track and DNF with a severe case of the blues. In the next race, Travis would prematurely end his season as only four riders in 2002 would survive to make the gate in every main event. At the checkers, though, it was Carmichael tying the great Rick Johnson with his 61st AMA Supercross Motocross career win. Still, it had taken RC five races to shave only 10 points off of Villeman's lead. All right, we're here in front of the merchandise trailer. You can pick up all the souvenir t-shirts, hats, uh, Jeff Emig lithograph, autograph, by the way. 
What can I get you? What can I get you? Step up, everyone. What can I get you? Carmichael shirt. What do you need back there? Hey, coming over here. What do you need back there? All right. You can pick up programs, hockey jerseys, probably keychains, baby t-shirts for the girls. Those look good. Okay, I'm here with Matt. He's running a merchandise trailer. Things are going crazy. Things. What's the what's the hot product today? I, I think all the rider jerseys are definitely the hot item. We've got rider jerseys from Carmichael, McGrath, Pastrana, all going like hotcakes. You need to get out to all of the cases. You need to get out to all the stands. Purchase your shirts right away. Uh, okay, now besides that, what other stuff can you find here? In the trailer, you're going to find anything that happened for the anniversary. We have limited edition of last year's jerseys, last year's t-shirts by all the riders, as well as a series of bench shirts. What's your, what's your personal favorite item? Well, you, you, can't can't go, you can't go wrong with the McGrath. All right, all right. You well, never lose. All right. All of your Supercross memorabilia can be picked up at Supercross.com. So check it out. Lady Luck then stepped in when Billiman, riding for a photo shoot on a practice track during an off week, injured his shoulder. The Yamaha front runner sat on the sidelines, unable to ride Daytona while Ricky took advantage of the brakes with a win, finally capturing the points lead by a mere five points. Team Yamaha's Tim Ferry got out of the gate, edging out three Hondas for his first hole shot of the season. 250's underway from New Orleans. Ferry got a good break. Ferry gets the whole shot and is out in front, number 15 on the Yamaha four stroke, and three Hondas battling it out for second. Early on, it was the Superdome track that was winning. Nathan Ramsey went down, allowing Carmichael to slide into second place. But down goes. Oh, that's too Ramsey. bad. Ramsey. It looked like Ramsey was about on his way down anyway, and Ricky just solidified that. Ferry gave up his lead going down after four laps. And oh. Bill Ferry goes down. Carmichael inherits the lead. Billman inherits second place. When the smoke had cleared, Ricky was once again in charge, followed by the ever-present Billman and the fellow Frenchman Kawasaki's Stefan Roncata. Midway, Roncata threw a beautiful block pass on Billman, vaulting himself into second. Roncata, I'm sure he told me earlier today, Billman just hates it when I'm passing. He hates it, and he just did. At the checkers, it was Carmichael with his sixth win of the season. Roncata second and Philemon third. The flying Frenchman, another podium, determined to work through the pain of his sore shoulder, doing whatever he had to do to stay in the thick of the points chase. All right, you guys, why don't we go talk to Roy Jansen, Vice President of Operations for Clear Channel Motorsports, to tell us how Supercross gets put together. For 27 years, we've been bringing dirt into stadiums and building Supercross tracks. And uh, if you look at the, the, the tracks over the years, the amount of dirt that we use and the way in which we build them is dramatically different. And then all of the enhancements uh, are dramatically different, all the rest of the things that go into um, you know, the, the sporting experience that it's grown to become. Uh, we made the joke five years ago, we, we had a, a red van with a raised roof, and you know, now we have 35 tractor trailers on the road full time, five of them that are just out doing the Supercross tour. The tracks really are the magic of the Supercross, being able to transform uh, a local stadium that's noted for some other activity into a you know, motorsports facility. And we make a point of changing the racetracks week to week so that the riders see a different track uh, each week in, in the progression of the series. And we change them year to year for each market so the spectators see a different track uh, each year in that marketplace. And we do that by uh, using the variety of obstacles that, uh, uh, that are traditionally found in Supercross tracks and incorporating them into different designs. And if it's a baseball-sized floor, uh, the, the tracks allow a certain more flexibility than if it's a football-sized floor. And uh, we also have uh, an over-under bridge that allows a, uh, a dramatically different style of track than uh, at, at, at facilities where we don't use the over-under. Uh, a, a track runs uh, 6,000 to 8,000 cubic yards of dirt, depending on which building we're in. And the degree of what it takes to build, it really depends on the facility. And uh, then at places like Bank One Ballpark in Phoenix, where we're on top of uh, the, the baseball field, uh, we have to come in and lay down 9,000 sheets of plywood uh, in order to protect the surface and then bring the track in. So it differs uh, at a place like the Metrodome where we're on a concrete floor. It's a little bit easier where the, the dirt goes on the concrete and comes up right, off, right up off the concrete. So it really depends on which facility we're at. And it takes about uh, a week to get a track in and get a track out. One of the things that's really uh, changed Supercross over the past few years has just been the presentation of the event itself. We spent the money and, and invented a, a product called Tough Blocks, which are foam blocks that uh, are the size of hay bales and from that have grown tough blocks and super blocks and corner berms and so they provide the safety barriers for the riders and at the same time provide a, a vehicle in which to display sponsor signage in a bit more professional way. 
We've never had a Supercross season without a visit to the Houston Astrodome, America's first dome stadium. And as we get ready for this year's version, we're witnessing an incredible turnaround by Ricky Carmichael, the defending champion. 30-second board is up. When that goes sideways, there's 5 to 10 seconds, and that gate will drop, and we'll have our main event from Houston underway. There's number 54, Ryan Clark, at the top of his helmet. He made it out of that semi into the main event. So we have two helmet cameras, one on Rakata, Another Frenchman right now, right now, although he's living in the U.S., he wants to be known as an American, David Villeman. And we're set to go. Off and running in Houston. Oh, McGrath getting caught behind Ferry. Tim Ferry, number 15 on the Yamaha. He gets the Powerade hole shot. Tim Ferry, and look at that, Ezra Lust just pops into the lead. Great move by Ezra Lust. Ramsey's there, Ferry's there, Villeman in good position. This is Ron Cotta. Terrible start all around behind Brian Mason. That's Hoffman right there in front of us. This is what it looks like when you don't get the start. Where are you going to make a pass right there? There's nowhere to go. And meanwhile, out front, we've got a new leader. Ramsey on the four-stroke Honda has passed Ezra Lusk with Ricky Carmichael right behind Lusk. There comes Ricky. Oh, on the inside, Carmichael making the move for second place, but Ezra Lusk coming right back. Oh, Ezra's not willing to give that up easily, that's for sure to the points leader. So McGrath on pace with the leaders right now. Oh, that's a good battle back and forth we go. Villeman regains the position on McGrath. Beautiful move and Ezra goes down. Ezra went down, he's out of second. Oh, and Villeman got caught on the back tire. I don't think Jeremy meant to do that. Of course, right for Yamaha, he doesn't want to make things any more difficult on Villeman. That was an accident. Jeremy jumped across caught his front tire. At least it wasn't a Kawasaki this time. No one hasn't had the best of luck with those guys. Let's take another look. So it's Ezra just trying to get going, and Jeremy jumps across right to the line of Villeman. Didn't mean that. Villeman going down. Ezra doing a good job of getting around him. It doesn't look like number 25 on the four-stroke Honda, Nathan Ramsey, wants to give up that lead easily because he's given it a good fight, David. Look at the pressure. Carmichael really starting to force Ramsey. Oh, oh, Ramsey had the loose rear end, and then Carmichael. Carmichael darn near landed on top of the hay bag. I don't believe the saves that Carmichael. People are going to look at this tape. Oh, here he comes again. Hey. Ramsey <laughs> powers by him. That would have put both of them down if he'd have connected with him. And Carmichael looks impatient to me. Like I said, he expects to win more. Here he comes again. Carmichael saying hello to Nathan, saying, hey, I didn't want to hit you, but uh, I should be out in front. Oh, they scrape a little bit there. Yeah, Nathan can feel this pressure now. So Ricky Carmichael's made up his mind. It's time to make a move, and here he goes. By the bar with Nathan Ramsey. They look at each other. Nathan gives him a nod. And the clean block pass. I'll see you later. And you know, it makes sense, just like I said, for Jeremy to give Villeman a couple of points if, in fact, that's what he does. For Nathan to get out of the way and let Ricky, Ricky win this race. But I'll tell you what, even if that weren't the case, Ricky demands the lead here. Watch this. We'll see what Jeremy does here. David Villeman, number 12. They look at each other. Almost similar to what Ricky Carmichael did with Nathan Ramsey, and it's uh, David Villeman picking up a couple of points. Ricky Carmichael just in cruise control right now. The white. white flag is out. We're on the final lap. Ricky looking for his seventh win on the season. His 22nd career 250 Supercross victory. Carmichael. The pyrotechnics go off. And he wins his seventh of the season. He'll congratulate his teammate. I know Nathan Ramsey had the best race of his 250 career. After round 11 in Houston, Ricky Carmichael was in first place with 234 points. David Villeman was in second with 217. Ezra Lusk in third with 168. Jeremy McGrath was in fourth with 160. From the Edward Jones Dome in St. Louis, Missouri, a city known for the most famous Supercross upset, it's round 11 of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick. Jeremy McGrath, Nathan, Ram Nathan Ramsey, the fast qualifiers, the points leader Carmichael, Fonseca Ferry, Villeman, Roncata, Tortelli, Lusk, Thomas, Waugh, Lewis, Clark, Pavoni, Johnson, Voss, and the rest of the crew. And you can see right there, all the way on the right of the screen, Carmichael and then Villeman, first and second in the points. It doesn't mean they have to line up to the inside, but that's what they've chosen here. 
We're ready to go with the main event from St. Louis. Can Carmichael come back and keep his string alive? Carmichael with a great start on the inside. Who will get the power aid hole shot? Carmichael, number four. He gets the power aid hole shot with number 24, Fonseca, right on his tail. Jeremy McGrath in third. Ron Cotta, who crashed in the practice lap. There goes our helmet camera. Is battling for second now. So guess who's out in front? It's Ricky Carmichael, Team Honda number four. Honda has never won here in St. Louis. Well, it's looking good right now because Fonseca, who rode strong in his heat race, is back there to kind of ride roadblock for his teammate Carmichael out front. We've got a battle going on for second place. Jeremy McGrath has shown Fonseca a wheel. He rubs him a little plastic, and the crowd's going crazy. McGrath. Takes him in the whoops. Fonseca now, in front of McGrath. Goes into second place, retakes second place. I was about to say that Jeremy, he wasn't off the hook with Fonseca. Here's a battle between uh, the two guys from the right side of the Atlantic. You see, Billman and Roncata, yeah. yeah. He had to look over right there and make sure. He and Roncata have gotten into it a little bit, regressive stuff. and. Some slapping of the helmets, but I think they're past that. Nathan Ramsey, number 25, and number 12, David Villeman. Villeman comes to the inside, and Villeman takes him. As we see this Yamaha battle taking place, Villeman and Jeremy McGrath still have quite a few laps to go. Villeman on the inside. Nice. David Villeman moves into third. And Fonseca, number 24, trying to hold off number 12, David Villeman. Well, Villeman just about had him passed a moment ago, and Fonseca held on. This is going to be good. There's a wrong choice with Villeman. Then Villeman gets to run that rut right down the middle. It's developed it's a one-line situation through the roof this week because the soil is a little sandier. And the checkers are flying. His eighth win of the season. Ricky Carmichael, his 23rd career Supercross victory. David Villeman takes a second place. Kind of mad about my, uh, my style, you know. I always thought fall and I had to come back. And it was a nice race, you know. It's, uh, it seems like he's, it was difficult the last uh, few runs. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm back, you know, 100%. And, uh, you know, going to give it a shot. It's going to be tough, though. Wow, it was a good race. You know, uh, everything was going for me pretty smooth out there. I was, uh, I'm really happy it turned out that way. You know, uh, it's going to be a long series. We got four more races left. And, uh, I'm ready for it to be over, man. It's uh, been stressful, but you know that's what these things are all about. All right, you guys. All these Supercross fans have to wait in line to go see Ricky Carmichael. I got the pass. I go right on through. Let's go. Let's go meet Ricky Carmichael and all the Honda boys. Nathan Ramsey. Woo! Hey, uh, we're in Indianapolis. And the fans pretty good here. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's pretty cool to get up here in the in the domes and stuff, and uh, you know, get to meet the guys that don't get down in the pits every week. And, and it's, it's it's real organized, so it makes it fast, so everybody gets an autograph. How many, about about how many posts do you think you've done? About three, four, five thousand today? Yeah, at least maybe uh, maybe six thousand. Six thousand? I, I figure. You know, it's worth it. Is that um, you know, you do your cardiovascular training and spring training for the motorcycle? Do you do you found that uh? with your success and, and uh, all that that you've had to actually train more with the pen? Yeah, you know, I consider this part part of my training. I, I get up here and I sign away and, and relieve the arm pump pressure, you know? Do, do you, I mean, are you talking yourself through it? I know sometimes yeah. these autograph sessions get really tough. Sometimes, you know, and there's guys back here, oh, come on, come on, I'm, hurt, I'm trying to hurry, you know, and, and it gets tight, but I have to, like, focus and get through it. And then, and then they throw, like, a hat and a shirt your way, and that's yeah, just like... it's like three and one. So then you're talking more and more, and you know, six thousand. That's just posters. And that's not counting shirts, hats, everything. So. Wow. Well, you heard it here from Nathan Ramsey. These autograph sessions are a lot tougher than they look. All right, Ernesto Fonseca, you've been in the states for three years. Okay. Do you think uh, that your English is getting better, or, or is it still kind of hard to uh, to uh, no, it's know what know what the fans want? No, it's definitely getting a lot better. I think. Uh, the more time you spend with, with Americans, the easier, the easier it gets. Has the, has the signature shortened up? Has it gotten shorter? The more you sign, the uh, shorter and quicker the autograph gets, right? Uh, yeah, but I try to keep it the same. You know, I, I um, just try to do E and then Fonseca. I try to keep it the same and uh, 
Better go fast because there's, there's definitely a lot of fans every year. Now, right now, this year, you're number 24. That, that number's going to drop in the future. You get all the way down to one. Then when you get to one, you, you actually start signing number one. But then you get past that, and I think that's where I'm at. You get to the next level where you're so cool, you don't even put a number down. All right, well. How many years is that going to take you? I don't know. You know, hopefully uh, I'll get a couple championships in the, in the next couple of years. And then after that, like you said, I'd like to be around. And uh, it's definitely a great sport to be around. I love it. Well, Nathan was uh, telling me that he signs upwards of about 6,000 posters each, each autograph session. And uh, that that requires some training. Um, do you do anything special for your autograph sessions? Do you, do you practice at home? Uh, do you do finger exercises, or, or is it just signing checks? Not really. Just kind of trying to sign as, much, as many posters as I, as I can and uh, try to keep my signature good, not get it any sweatier as, as the day goes on. <laughs> Ernesto Fonseca, the focus of his autograph session is to not let his signature get too squirrely. So we'll have to check him later on. The fans are having a blast coming up the 43rd Supercross stage in the Silverdome in Pontiac. The most Supercross races ever staged in one venue. I'm Art Ekman. Welcome to round 13 of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick. 32nd board is up. There you can see Carmichael right there. McGrath just to his right. Villeman right here next to Ron Cotta. Those first five gates, I have a feeling, are going to be the ones that come out of the corner first. Can Ricky Carmichael make it seven in a row? We're off and running. Well, it looked like Kyle Lewis might have got the Powerade hole shot. It was very, very close. Well, he was very close with Fonseca, who now has the lead, number 24. There's Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael in second place now behind Fonseca. Lewis was credited with third after the opening lap. Ricky putting so much pressure on Fonseca. Here he goes. Here comes Carmichael. Look out if he gets the lead. He'll just take away on this track. Yeah, he gets a better timing through here, I believe. Well, Fonseca holds on. Boy, Villeman's got to be hating it. Clear back in uh, I don't know, ninth, eighth, something like that. He's got just about every factory Honda rider. Oh, Ricky! That is a tricky section, and I was well, he was hitting it so fast that his rear wheel didn't touch the top and throw it back level. Oh, Villeman went by, gave a quick look, and then poured it on. There's Chad Watts, Ricky Carmichael's mechanic. He's up and running once again. Ricky's fortunate he didn't wreck an ankle or something having to run 40 miles an hour. Fonseca inherits the lead with Tortelli in uh, second. Lusk now in third on the replay. Check it out. Watch Ricky when he goes up this whooped out double. The rear wheel doesn't touch the top. Loops him out. And if that kid wasn't as solid as a rock with one of the most impressive training programs in the sport, I don't think he could walk away from that and get back in this battle as aggressive as he has. He's in 19th, moving to 18th right now. Bam, a head plant knocks the visor off, so he's going to look like a snail the rest of this race. He probably is going to reach up and try to tear that off. Can Villeman crack into his 20-point lead? All night I've been pretty fast on that, that section, and uh, I just hit it a little too fast and missed the top jump, and it didn't hit my back wheel to level my bike out and just came off the back and looped it out. It was, you know, terrible, embarrassing the, the whole nine yards. Boy, it looks like a tight freight drive. Oh, oh, Sebastian Tortelli moved in front. And Villeman got through and is in fourth with Ramsey in front. What a race. You'd think that we'd have a yawner here with missing so many of the top riders, but you could throw a blanket over the first six. Check it out again. There's Tortelli going And Ramsey down. went down and held up McGrath. And watch Tortelli. He must have landed on with his foot on the brake or something, just made a left. It was good that Villeman was uh, back far enough to be able to react to it. But with Ramsey going down now as well, Fonseca less Villeman. And Ezra Perry. can smell a win. With Carmichael out of the picture, Lusk has to believe that he can get around Fonseca. The lead is being challenged. Lusk. Gets tied up a little bit with Fonseca. Oh, Villeman goes down. Tim Ferry cuts through. Here comes Ramsey. And McGrath was able to slide back around Roncada and get up on the rear wheel of Villeman. So it changes the complexion of the race just like that. Check it out again. Villeman going down. Now Lusk 
tried to get in there and make contact, and then Villeman came in and was like, well, I don't want to plow Ezra. I thought I had a run at him, but it's not going to work. He laid it over and went down himself. Right now, it's Fonseca and Lusk battling it out with Ferry in third. Lusk, number 11, against Fonseca, number 24. We got a real battle. You can, you're absolutely correct, David. He can smell victory. Now, here's a, a line that Ezra has. It's going to go to the inside this time, though. If he'd have stayed wide, he could triple into this corner. Here comes Lusk. Shows him a wheel. Looks like Fonseca's tired. Lusk goes for the triple. Lusk cuts in front of Fonseca. Fonseca comes right back. Back and forth we go in Pontiac. Oh, my goodness. What a ride with Ferry holding on close at third. Let's go to Davey Coombs. Davey, can you hear us? I can't believe this, but the fastest rider on the track right now is number four. I just watched Chad Watts' pit board. Carmichael has worked his way up to about eighth spot, is riding a second and a half faster than Fonseca and Lusk right now. Don't count Carmichael out of this race. He's right behind Ron Cutta, who's got our helmet cam. Now, there's plenty of time left. Ricky is actually catching everybody out front. Lusk! Lusk, number 11 of the Kawasaki. Here comes Ferry, number 15, on the four-stroke Yamaha. He moves into second. Doesn't quite have the edge for the block pass on Lusk. What great racing from Pontiac. Taking a look at all his action up front, but Art Carmichael is catching everybody. He's there he is in the corner before the whoops. Lusk having trouble. Ferry takes over the lead. Back and forth. I'm telling you, this has been a great, the greatest race of the year. It's going to get better. Carmichael is catching everybody. Tim Ferry, number 15, is our leader with Lusk in second. Like everything was clicking for me. You know, everybody was falling. I was going around them, and you know, by lap 11, I was in the lead. And when I got there, I felt great. I felt really comfortable. My speed was good. I was keeping my same distance in front of Ramsey. It's. Uh... Ramsey in third, Fonseca in fourth, McGrath. He's passing Ramsey in the whoops with David Villeman and Carmichael right there. Carmichael can still win this race, Art. Just wondering where Villeman was, because obviously that's the guy that I need to be, because he's in second in the, in the championships. Here's a battle for the points lead of the series. Villeman holding down second. He has not missed the podium in every race he's entered this year. Here comes Carmichael. He's close. McGrath is right in front, number two of David Villeman. Here comes Carmichael making the pass on Villeman. I don't believe this kid, Art. I've seen a lot, but I've not seen Oh, Les goes flying! Yeah, a little problem there in the woods, but, uh, you know, it was crazy. Everybody is crashing. I guess seven of the top ten guys failed at one point in the main event, and, man, it was, it was unreal. All these guys passed Carmichael when he was... Running after the bike in third gear. Figured that's that. What's that do to your spirits when you see this kid come back around you? So Ricky Carmichael now. Look at that. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Carmichael is, is taking every chance he can take. He's tripling everywhere where nobody else can in the ruts. His visor is in his face. And he's still the fastest rider on the track. Our leader is Ferry. Ramsey's in second. But look at this battle for third with McGrath, number two, and number four, Ricky Carmichael. Time is running out for Carmichael. And look at that. Ricky Carmichael taking another chance by the bar. They look at each other. Carmichael moves on McGrath into third. And Ferry went down. That's the leader. Carmichael can win the race. He's got to get around his teammate Ramsey. I caught like the third wolf or so and I started getting sideways and then I got over to the bales, hit a bale and I think one of the bales went in my back wheel and uh, I tipped over and at that point, you know, everybody was in such a pack, you know, it was such a close race that, you know, I went from first to 13th in like, you know, a matter of seconds. We're on the final out. lap, David. Can Ramsey hold on for his very first 250 victory, holding off the defending champion? He triples. If he can triple this section here, and he does. Oh, it's he's getting close. Ramsey got a chance. won the 125 race here last year. One of his eight supports Kyle's uh, career wins. But can he hold off Ricky Carmichael? He rode an excellent race. I mean, he, he rode every lap possible and won that thing. But, uh, you know, also, I don't think I would have done as good if I wouldn't have got as many gifts given to me. A lot of people went down, and but that's the way it goes. That's racing. Into the whoops. The pressure's on. These two battled it out early in a race this year, but then it was so early, 
that Ramsey was letting Carmichael, I think, have the advantage as teammates. Now, he's on the verge of winning his very first 250 race, Nathan Ramsey! The first, first time winner this season. In fact, he's the first, first time 250 winner since Ricky Carmichael back at Daytona three seasons ago. What a great race. A first time winner. Just tried to ride clean laps, real smart, and, and everybody around me just kind of made, made mistakes. And I made a few passes on a couple guys and other guys crashed. So, I mean, it worked out just perfect. I mean, I was so excited to cross the finish line first. I don't care if it's by a knobby, it still counts as number one, you know? You know I learned that the smart guy sometimes wins the race, not always the fastest guy. So I'd have to say that's probably the most important thing that I, I might not have been the fastest guy, but I was definitely the most consistent, and that, that's what worked out for me. The next round at Texas Stadium was important for Ricky Carmichael to keep the pressure on Villeman by showing him that Pontiac was only a temporary setback. Jeremy McGrath, who was making a push to take third place in the season standings, snagged his fourth hole shot of the year with Carmichael and Villeman in tow. Chad Reed won the 125 East already, and here they go. The long start. And guess what? Jeremy McGrath getting the power eight hole shot in a major pile up behind him. By lap four, Carmichael turned it up a notch, moving past McGrath. There goes Ricky Carmichael. He is just what I was talking about, Terry. I just said McGrath cannot leave the door open. He, he went into a left-hander after the triple, and he left room on the inside. Billman, feeling time was running out on his championship chances, passed McGrath and closed the gap on the leader. The battle at the front of the pack. Ricky Carmichael has the lead, but it's David Billman right behind him, and those are the top two overall in the series. He's already starting to make mistakes. Billman to the outside. You saw the interval just a minute ago. Billiman is being very patient right now. He didn't even try to get after Ricky right there. He just kind of laid up. He briefly challenged for the lead, but Carmichael, remembering Billiman's brilliant last lap pass at Indy, let it all hang out. RC's thinking, I'm going to pull away and not give him a chance for crash trying. He won six in a row midway through this season, eight overall, and here he comes. He's going to enjoy the checkered finish here. In the end, the podium had McGrath in third, Villeman losing three more points to RC, who stood on the top step. With a win in Salt Lake City, Carmichael would become only the fourth rider in the sports history to win back-to-back -back Supercross titles. Fan interest was at an all-time high, as the excellence of David Villeman made sure that RC's second consecutive title was anything but a sure bet. The board is sideways. The championship at stake for the 250s is underway. The power eight hole shot. Carmichael goes wide. Cutting inside Villeman. Villeman takes the lead. The difference between first and second place is three points. Villeman has to win if he wants to hold off that victory celebration for Carmichael. Oh, this is interesting now because Villeman said in the last race, hey, I didn't want to lead. I wanted to take him like Indianapolis in the final lap. And Carmichael took advantage of it and just took away with the race. This is where the battle is. This is where the championship rests. These guys have already just opened up a big gap over there's Fonseca and McGrath back there. These guys have checked out so much on the line right now. Oh, a stumble. Here comes Carmichael. Can Villeman stay with him? Can he get the lead back again? Look at this. See how messed up that is? We got more mud. It's impossible to see. That's why it's so important to have those roll-offs and tear-offs. Billman's running out of time, Art, but he is closing that gap. Little by little. White flag. Final lap already. Who would have thought watching him lay on the ground, unconscious for a moment, bloody face, concussion, broken bone in his hand at round one, and then not that great of performances in the next two rounds. Billman at one point with a 35-point lead. That just goes to show that the long season, injuries play a major part, and you got to be tough. Jeff Stanton, one of only four other riders to win back-to-back -back championships, and a Ricky Carmichael wins back-to-back -back championships. Ricky Carmichael is the first Supercross champion on Honda since Jeremy in 1996, and this young man 
is one happy rider, Jeff Stanton. He knows what it feels like. It feels great, you know. Uh, things were shaky there after the first race, you know. Uh, you work hard in the off season to, to try to win a championship and for it to turn around that quick, you know, be in the first race and on a new bike, things were uh, a bit shaky. But luckily, uh, you know, it took me a couple weeks to get back going and get to where I thought I, I should have been and was able to start winning races and got in a groove. Uh, David rode really well. He won the first race and it gave him a lot of momentum. So uh, he had a lot of confidence and he kind of just rode that confidence out through the whole season and, and, and was riding well. You know, it's all about just trying to win races and, and being good for the sport and, and trying to do the best that I can do. You know, I, I'm not out there to break records. I'm just out there to try to win as much as I can. And then at the end of the day, I just want to know that I gave it 100% and whatever turns out is whatever happens. After round 15 in Salt Lake City, Ricky Carmichael clinched the championship with 331 points. David Billiman was in second with 301. Jeremy McGrath was in third with 234. Ezra Luskin fourth with 223. And Stefan Roncata was in fifth place with 218 points. Earlier, more than 35,000 fans roamed the pits looking forward to the Supercross in the desert. They're now in the stadium for round 16, the final round of EA Sports Supercross. Presented by Speed Stick. Ricky Carmichael, Jeremy McGrath, Ezra Lusk looking good here in Las Vegas. Ernesto Fonseca, Stefan Roncata, Kyle Lewis. He got a great start in qualifying. Jeremy knows how important the start is. He's going to need it. The 32nd board to go sideways. There's some of the fans, Jeremy McGrath fans here in Vegas. It's sideways. Five to ten seconds, and the final race of the 2002 Supercross season will be underway. The Powerade hole shot, who will get it? Looked like Kyle Lewis again. It looked like Kyle Lewis again. That would be his second. The Carmichael, I believe, tripled his way up front. There's McGrath, number two. Number 21 is Ron Cotta. There's Carmichael in the lead with Lewis in second place. Lewis, number 23. Carmichael number four. Here comes Ezra Lusk. He hippity hops by Lewis number 23. Now Lusk had some speed in practice. He got a couple of good lap times in there chasing down Carmichael in the practice. Milliman testing Lewis. They come over the finish line jump. Milliman comes out on top. He's got Lusk in front of him. It's Carmichael, Lusk, Milliman, and Lewis. Ricky just defies so many different things. He sits a little bit further back than, than most riders. He kind of drops his elbows a little bit more than other riders. His handlebars are probably, I know he's smaller, but his handlebars are low. His rear end sags lower than most. His seat almost doesn't exist. <laughs> One lap to go. And Ricky, once again, helps put the winning of Supercross factory team Honda back on the winning track. They have had three different winners on the season with Larocco taking the first one and Ramsey the last one before this race. Put out a show for the fans now. He's just getting to be. He's on cruise control right now. Kind of a bore for him winning these things so easily like this. One more straightaway. Pyrotechnics light up the joint here in Las Vegas and Ricky Carmichael breaks the record of the most wins in back-to-back -back seasons, 25 in two seasons. He breaks Jeremy's record of 1996-97 in splendor here in Vegas. This Villeman, that's the whole podium right there. They gotta be happy to wrap the season standing up on the podium. Win another title and to, to win this last race going into Glen Helen. It's, uh, it was a hell of a season, I tell you. Man, I, after the first race, it wasn't looking too good, but I kept my head down and, and worked as hard as I could. And man, these guys are riding really good this year. They, uh, they stepped it up since last year, but uh, you know, that's the way it's going. It's good for the sport. In 2003, expect to see Suzuki's Travis Pastrana healthy and ready to add his name to the list of veteran contenders. And with younger riders like the first Australian to win an AMA race and 125 title, Chad Reed stepping up to the 250 ranks, the pressure on the best rider on the planet, Ricky Carmichael, will be just as fierce. Expect another bar-to-bar -bar season of excitement with one guarantee. More surprises.